Nick, do you hear a little, little beeping in the background? Good evening, and welcome to tonight's telephone town hall meeting with Nick Troiano, your independent candidate for Congress here in Pennsylvania's 10th District, and our very special guest, David Walker, the former Comptroller General of the United States, a former public trustee for Social Security and Medicare, and the nation's leading nonpartisan expert on the federal budget and national debt. My name is Matt Ruth, the Director of Outreach for Nick Troiano's Independent Congressional Campaign. I'll be the moderator for tonight's town hall meeting. We are very excited to have you join us for a critically important conversation about how we, the people, can fix our broken political system and tackle our nation's unsustainable budget. Right now, thousands of voters are in the process of joining our exclusive telephone town hall meeting, so please stay on the line, and we'll be hearing from independent congressional candidate Nick Troiano and former U.S. Comptroller General David Walker in just a minute or two. Also, we want to hear from you tonight, and if you would like to ask a question, please press zero on your telephone keypad, and you'll be connected directly with one of our volunteer operators. Again, you may ask a question by pressing zero. If you have just joined us, again, good evening, and welcome to tonight's telephone town hall meeting. My name is Matt Ruth, the Director of Outreach for Nick Troiano's Independent Congressional Campaign here in Pennsylvania's 10th District. I'll be the moderator this evening. In just a minute, I'll be introducing Nick Troiano and our very special guest, David Walker, the former Comptroller General of the United States and the nation's leading nonpartisan expert on the federal budget and national debt. Right now, thousands of voters are in the process of joining our telephone town hall meeting. Over the next 10 minutes, you'll hear from both Nick and Mr. Walker, and you'll be able to answer uh, several live telephone polling questions. You'll be able to ask a question at any time by pressing zero and being connected to an operator. So without further ado, I'm excited to kick off tonight's tele town hall conversation about how we, the people, can fix our broken political system and tackle our nation's unsustainable budget and national debt. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm happy now to turn the line over to Nick Troiano. Thank you very much, Matt. It is an honor to speak to each and every one of you who are on the line right now. Again, my name is Nick Troiano, and I'm an independent candidate for the United States House of Representatives in our district this year. Like many of you, I am sick of politics as usual. I am tired of politicians putting their party ahead of the people, and I am tired of our politicians putting their special interest campaign contributors ahead of our community. And that is precisely why I am running as an independent candidate and refusing to accept a dime from any PAC, lobbyist, corporation, or union. And for the first time in our district's history, my campaign has collected enough signatures, over 7,000, to get on the ballot this year, to give you a third choice when you vote on Tuesday, November 4th. Tonight, I want to have a conversation with you about how we, the people, can fix our politics and tackle our nation's unsustainable budget and debt. These are the main issues I'm running on, and I'm very proud to have on the line with me tonight the country's leading nonpartisan expert on political and fiscal reform, the nation's former Comptroller General, David Walker, who will be speaking with us shortly. Now, before I tell you a little bit about me, I first want to ask a question of you, which you can answer right on the keypad of your phone right now. My question for you is this. Do you think, if we remain on our current course as a country, will future generations of Americans have a higher, lower, or about the same standard of living and level of prosperity as we have today. Again, the question is, if we remain in our current course, do you think future generations will have a higher, lower, or about the same standard of living? You can press 1 for higher standard of living. You can press 2 for lower standard of living. Or you can press 3 for about the same. We'll report those results live in just a minute. So who am I? Again, my name is Nick Troiano. I'm an independent candidate for Congress. I'm from Milford in Pike County in the northeast corner of our state. Milford is a town that is known as the birthplace of the American conservation movement. 
It is where Gifford Pinchot and Teddy Roosevelt hatched plans for the National Park Service. As I was growing up in Milford, running my own small business, writing for my county newspaper, and working at our nearby national park, I learned the value of stewardship. That's the value of making sure that we leave things better or the same than how we found them. That value was a key part of Milford's history. It's a key part of our country's history, but it's entirely missing in Washington today. I know that because I spent a few years in our nation's capital. It's where I got my master's degree in American government. I saw up close that how, as a result of today's dysfunctional politics, we're living beyond our means at the next generation's expense. And this is especially the case when it comes to our federal budget. Today, we have over $17 trillion in debt. And if nothing is done, we're set to add another $8 trillion by the end of the decade. But in order to fix our debt and grow our economy, we need leaders who are willing to work with each other to put the country's interests ahead of their own. Now, unfortunately, our current congressman, Tom Marino, has shown his unwillingness to do so. He votes with his party 95% of the time, and nearly two-thirds of his campaign funding come from special interest groups. That's why I decided to run this year. So what can we do about the problem I've described? I've laid out my views on my website, which is nicktroiano.com, T-R-O-I-A-N-O. These views include how we can reduce government spending, reform our tax code, fix our health care system, and get our economy working again. My website also has a way to contact me and get involved in the campaign, so I encourage you to take a look. Now, I'm glad to answer any questions you have tonight. You can press zero at any time to enter the queue and speak with a call screener. Now, many of you um, would like to know these views, and you should know that they were shaped by the experience and expertise of David Walker, who served as the country's top accountant and auditor as U.S. Comptroller General, whom I met back in 2009. That's why I invited David Walker to be our special guest this evening. He's been at the front lines of this battle as a public trustee of Social Security and Medicare, and he's sounded the alarm for the past decade about growing debt and the common sense ways to solve it. Now, before turning the call over to Mr. Walker for a few minutes to share his insights, our moderator, Matt, will announce the results of our first survey question. Matt? Thank you, Nick. Uh, Nick uh, previously posed the question, do you think if we remain on our current course, future generations of Americans will have a higher, lower, or about the same standard of living and level of prosperity as we have today? And about 4% of you answered a higher standard of living, 85% answered a lower standard of living, and 11% answered about the, same, uh, about the same lower standard of living. Now I'd like to turn the line over to former Comptroller General of the United States, David Walker, for the next two to three minutes. After Mr. Walker, we will take your questions. Mr. Walker, what do you make of these results uh, this evening? Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity to be with you. I'm calling in from Black Rock, Connecticut. I think the, the survey results tell it all. Eighty-five percent of the people in the line believe that we're headed for a lower standard of living for our children and grandchildren. Uh, that is downright un-American, and it's unacceptable. Look, I, I've earned a hard-earned reputation as a truth teller and a problem solver, and I can say firsthand Nick Troiano is the same way. I've known Nick for several years. I've worked with him in D.C. and around the country on how do we address our fiscal challenge in a way that will get the job done. Uh, Nonpartisan solutions that can achieve bipartisan support, and they can be sustainable over time. Let me give you a few facts and observations, and then I will be happy to answer any questions you may have. First, the deficit is down significantly at the federal level, but the deficit is still higher than economic growth. Our total debt has more than tripled since the year 2000. Our debt as a percentage of the economy is over 100 percent, the second highest in our history, only post-World War II, right after World War II was higher, and we're in a very different situation. While our deficit has come down, the Congress has failed to address the primary drivers of our structural deficits that lie ahead. Known demographic trends, meaning fewer and fewer workers supporting more and more retirees on a relative basis, rising health care costs, and our outdated tax system. We need uh, to make sure that the political parties and all the people in Washington work together 
for a principle-based compromise that will include budget reforms, Social Security reform, Medicare, Medicaid, and health care reform, tax reform, defense restructuring, and political reforms. The truth is, Washington is broken. We currently have a republic which is neither representative of nor responsive to the public. We have too many people in Washington who have a duty of loyalty to their party rather than the country. That's what George Washington warned us about, and it was why he was an independent. We have too many ideologues who don't want to engage in principle-based compromise, and we have too many career politicians. Uh, Nick is committed to telling the truth and to solving problems. He believes in progress over partisanship and results over rhetoric. Uh, I'm happy to be on this call, and I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Walker and Nick Troiano, for your remarks. Ladies and gentlemen, as we just heard, our country faces enormous challenges. But with fresh, independent leadership in Washington, we know we can solve those. So before we open the line for a question and answer period, we want to ask if you would be willing to lend your support to Nick Troiano's independent congressional campaign. You can answer right from your phone's keypad. Uh, please press 1 if you would be willing to volunteer in any way for the campaign, including by hosting a yard sign, covering a poll on Election Day, or writing a letter to the newspaper. Please press 2 if you would be willing to pitch in a contribution of whatever you can afford, whether that's $5 or $500. Please press 3 if you can't give your time or money but are willing to lend your support with your vote on Election Day. For those interested in getting involved, Nick will personally be in touch after this meeting. Nick's campaign is challenging both political parties and their special interest funders, and we need, to help, uh, we need your help to succeed. So again, please press 1 if you'd be willing to volunteer, press 2 if you'd be willing to donate, and press 3 if you can't do either but can count on your votes. Now we'd like to, take, uh, like to open the line for Nick Troiano and David Walker to answer your questions. At any time, you can press zero to be connected with an operator and hop on the line. Our first question comes from Chris in Milford. And uh, this question is directed to Mr. Troiano. Uh, please go Hi. ahead, Chris. My question is, I would like to know how you feel about the Affordable Care Act. Do you support it or do you not? Thank you very much for your good question, Chris. Um, I've laid out my health care policy in a paper that's on my website. Uh, as it pertains to the Affordable Care Act, it's a piece of legislation that I would not have supported in 2009. I think our country has two already unsustainable health care entitlements that we need to fix uh, before Congress should have considered adding a third. Uh, but five years later, I think uh, we need to be practical about what we can do from here. I think we need to acknowledge where the Affordable Care Act has worked, which in my view has been in extending uh, access to health insurance to millions of Americans, as well as making important reforms of the insurance industry itself, such as allowing coverage for those with pre-existing conditions. But we need to work hard to overhaul and reform parts of the law that aren't working. The Affordable Care Act has been too disruptive to people who already had plans they liked. It has uh, been creating too much uncertainty, especially for our business owners, and it's going to cost us too much. So I support scaling back the size and scope of the federal subsidies, of repealing the individual employer mandates, and instituting more market-based reforms to control uh, health care costs in our country. And as Dave said before, that's the primary driver of government spending and deficits moving forward and much more work needs to be done. Uh, Mr. Walker, maybe you have a thought to add or two about how we can actually con control health care costs in a more effective way. Well, the sad truth is the government has promised too much in health care. We've got tens of trillions of dollars in unfunded promises associated with health care. Uh, we do need some level of universal coverage that's appropriate, affordable, and sustainable, but, but we've way over-promised on that. In addition, we need to move beyond fee-for-service uh, payment systems uh, to more evidence-based approaches. Uh, comprehensive reform is essential. 
uh, because the number one driver of cost in the future is health care costs. And while they've come down somewhat in recent times, uh, they're still growing much faster than the economy, uh, which is not sustainable over time. Excellent. Uh, thank you so much. And uh, our next question comes from Roxanne in Milton. Go ahead, Roxanne. Yeah, um, first of all, um, I was wondering if um, your family was born and raised in Pennsylvania. And my second question is, being that you are so young, I know it's concerning to some voters that you don't have the experience needed to hold office. And if you can let us know if you agree or disagree with that and why. Thanks for the great questions, Roxanne. Um, I was born and raised in Pennsylvania, uh, first in Dingmans Ferry and then in Milford uh, all of my life. My parents moved uh, to Pennsylvania to give me a greater opportunity, uh, and I'm sure, as lu sure lucky that they did. Uh, went to a great public school, Delaware Valley High School, uh, where I was able to um, get a good education and also get more involved in my community. Uh, I am a young candidate. Um, I happen to be one of the youngest running in the country this year. And the reason why is because I see many of the problems our country is confronting as having a disproportionate impact on future generations. And both of our political parties today care much more about doing what is necessary to win their next election rather than working together to solve these problems for the next generation. So I think I can be an important voice uh, to make sure that our country is making decisions that are in our long-term best interest. I also like to point out that our current Congress is literally the oldest and longest serving that we've had in our entire history. And it's also the least productive and most dysfunctional. So if there ever was a time for some new ideas and a fresh approach, uh, I think now is it. I also just want to quickly address the issue of uh, experience. One of the things that I was able to collaborate with Mr. Walker on as I led an organization I co-founded called the Can Kicks Back was a piece of legislation called the Inform Act, which I helped draft and get introduced on a bipartisan basis in both houses of Congress. The Inform Act would force the government to disclose its true debt, meaning its long-term liabilities and obligations that it currently leaves off the books. Uh, the legislation has been endorsed by a 1,000 economists across the country and would be the first thing that I would seek to champion uh, if elected. And um, since we work together on this legislation, Mr. Walker, maybe you have a view on uh, why you think it might be important. Well, let me also note that uh, our founders established age requirements for each of the elected offices at the federal level, and Nick clearly meets that. I can also say firsthand, having worked with Nick over the last five years, uh, that uh, his experience and abilities uh, far exceed his chronological years. Uh, part of the problem that we have is the way the government keeps score does not provide a full and fair view of where we are and where we're headed. The biggest obligations the government has are unfunded obligations associated with Medicare, with Medicaid, uh, with uh, Social Security, uh, and now the, com the Congressional Budget Office is saying uh, that rather than saving us money over time, they believe that the Affordable Care Act actually will add to our deficit and debt challenges uh, over time. Uh, it's important that we know where we are and where we're headed uh, in order to uh, solve the problem, uh, and Nick is committed to doing that, as I am. Wonderful. Thank you, Roxanne. Our next question is a question for Mr. Walker from uh, Muriel and Kogan Station. Hi. Um, I, my question is for Mr. Walker, and uh, what I want to know is, is there really a budget crisis? Is there really a debt, or is this all a manufactured construct like the so-called postal service um, being broke? Is this just another way for the 0.01% to try to control us and force us to live with less? Well, let me give you some facts. From George Washington to William Jefferson Clinton, we accumulated $5.3 trillion in debt. Since that point, under George Walker Bush and President Obama, we've gone from $5.3 trillion in debt to $17.8 trillion in debt. And when you add, so that means more than tripled our debt under two presidents. 
if you end up looking at the off-balance sheet obligations, the amounts that are on the books, the unfunded Social Security obligations, about $10 trillion just based on the trustees. If you look at Medicare, about $30 trillion. If you look at a number of other you know, obligations, they are real and they are growing. And one of the challenges that we face is that we're projected to have relatively fewer workers to support these obligations. For example, in 1950, we had 16 people working for every person retired under Social Security, and Medicare didn't exist. Today, we have 3.2 people working for every person retired. It's going down to 2 to 1 by 2030, and it's going to stay at that level. And people are fortunately living longer. And so we don't have an immediate crisis, but we do have a serious problem that gets worse with the passage of time. And as 85% of the people said on this call at the outset, they believe that the path that we're on will result in our children and grandchildren having a lower standard of living. And that's unacceptable. It's un-American. All right. Thank you so much for that question, Muriel. Our next question comes from Carlos in uh, Beavertown. Car or Carlos? Uh, yes, my question is for the candidates. Um, Nick, if elected, uh, would you be more inclined to caucus with the uh, with the House Democrats or the House Republicans? And is your own uh, political thoughts uh, perhaps more in line uh, with uh, libertarian uh, policy? Thanks for the question, Carlos. Uh, I decided to run as an independent candidate this year because I think both parties are filling our country and our future, and I think something really needs to shake up politics as usual in the form of an independent movement in our country. Today, 42% of Americans uh, choose not to affiliate with either party, yet there are zero members of our House of Representatives uh, who are independent. And we're realizing the worst fears of our founders who warned against what the spirit of party and factions would do to our country. So if elected, I've said that I will not caucus with either party. My focus would be on being a good representative of our district and our community, through being present in our community, through improving our constituent services in our congressional office, and by participating in the rights and privileges afforded to every member, including voting on all key legislation. My long-term interest is in proving a model that politics can be done differently, that candidates don't have to obey the party bosses or take money from the special interests to get elected. And I think if we can accomplish that in our district this year, uh, it will lead to many more of such candidacies in future election cycles. And perhaps in 2016 or 2018, there can be a new caucus, a common sense caucus in Congress that is focused on trying to find common ground and solve some of the major issues that we face. Nick, can I jump in? Mm -hmm. I'm also one of the national co-founders of a group called No Labels, which is for Republicans, Democrats, and Independents who believe in progress over partisanship and results over rhetoric. There are members from both political parties as well as political independents that are part of this, and I can assure you Nick is a problem solver. Uh, and so that, that's an example of a group that he could be affiliated with that will give him access to people in both political parties without having to be a member of one of those political parties. I can also tell you that if Nick wins, this will be heard around the country and in Washington, D.C. So in many regards, the Pennsylvania 10th is ground zero to test the concept of people over party results over rhetoric. Excellent. And our next question comes from Eric here in Williamsport. Uh, this question is for Nick Troiano. Go ahead, Eric. Uh, hi, Nick. Thanks for taking my call. Um, I uh, listened to your, i got to say, the first time I heard your name was uh, when I got this call tonight. But nonetheless, uh, I heard a variety of platitudes about reducing deficit and absolutely no specifics. Do you have something in mind in terms of uh, government um, departments that you'd be willing to completely uh, eliminate? Uh, you'd also mentioned uh, defense spending in there. I'm interested in what your thoughts are in terms of where that needs to go. And finally, um, the problem with the independence, of course, is the second related question perhaps, is that one always feels like if you vote for 
an independent, perhaps you're wasting your vote and some other damn fool from another party will get in. So I'll, I'll leave you with those two comments. Great. Thank you, Eric, for those questions. I'll take <clears> your <throat> second one first in saying that I think the only way for someone to waste their vote in this election is to vote for the status quo uh, with either major party candidate because nothing is going to change in Washington if we keep sending the same folks back. Um, as for specifics on what my approach would be to uh, reducing our deficit, uh, <clears throat> I've laid out on my website, nicktriano.com, uh, to give you three key steps. Uh, and this was the approach of the bipartisan Simpson-Bowles Fiscal Commission. The first step is to restrain spending. Uh, the Government Accountability Office, for example, which Mr. Walker uh, once led, comes out every year with hundreds of specific recommendations of examples of uh, duplication or ineffectiveness in federal bureaucracy that they recommend phasing out. I'd pick up that report, and I think Congress should enact virtually every one of those recommendations. But the major growth in spending is set to occur in our health and retirement programs. So ensuring that we make and enact now and phasing gradually reforms to uh, our Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security would be really important. Uh, we have to keep the promises we've made to those in retirement now, but we also have to make sure these programs are sustainably solvent in the future. One specific thing we can do in Medicare, for example, is changing the way we pay providers uh, to reward them based on value rather than volume and ensure that care is being delivered in a more coordinated rather than a fragmented way. And we can do that through what's called the sustainable growth rate. Uh, the second step we need to do is reform our tax code uh, in a way that I think we should eliminate all of the credits, deductions, exclusions, and exemptions and force members of Congress to take specific votes uh, on any that they want to add back in. Today we have 70,000 pages of tax code. We forego over a trillion dollars a year uh, because of these loopholes. One that I would scale back, we're $18 trillion nearly in debt. We can't afford to give a deduction on mortgage interest for someone's second home worth up to a million dollars. Surely that can be paired back as one example. And the third thing that we need to do is reinvest in growing our economy, uh, protecting uh, investment in education and uh, infrastructure, for example. Now, you have to ask yourself, what has our congressman, Tom Marino, done in the 113th Congress? They've done the exact opposite. They've, through the budget sequester, uh, put across-the-board spending cuts, which included impairing our military readiness and slashing critical investments. Uh, they haven't reformed any of our major health and retirement programs. And instead of reforming the tax code, all they did was hike rates on upper income earners. So my approach would be very different. And I also think it's a way that both parties can find some common ground and solve this problem together, because it's not going to happen with only one side demanding that their agenda be put through. There needs to be some greater cooperation to get this done, as it's been done in the past. All right. Thank you so much. And uh, we have time for one final question. Uh, this question comes from Jerry in Williamsport. Uh, hi. This question is for Nick. Uh, Nick, if elected, uh, what would be your first order of business in Congress? What can you do first to get our budget in order? Thanks for the question, Jerry. Uh, as I mentioned before, I'd love to champion the piece of legislation that I helped get introduced uh, called the INFORM Act, which would put our true uh, nation's debt and obligations on the books. Only until we know the full size and scope of the problem are we going to be able to get our arms around it and truly solve it. I also think part of this call is focused on political reform. I think our Congress needs to reform the way it works. Uh, no Labels and Mr. Walker have been a champion of no budget, no pay. If Congress doesn't do its job in passing a budget, uh, members shouldn't get paid. Uh, I'd like to see that become a permanent part of how our Congress functions, as well as a rule that, for example, would require the Speaker of the House to achieve a 60% greater uh, level of support. I think this would incentivize a leader uh, to lead the House who can work with both sides rather than serving in a purely partisan position. Um, but I'll kick the question over to you, Mr. Walker, as well, and if you have a view on what the first thing, uh, first item of business should be for the next Congress. Well, I think the INFORM Act would clearly help be able to illuminate the size and scope of our problem. I also think that we need to enact 
uh, budget process reforms. The fact of the matter is, is that most states have gone to biennial budgeting. Uh, we need to focus not on balancing the budget, but we need to focus on getting control of spending uh, and having a plan that will get debt as a percentage of our economy down to a reasonable and sustainable level. As Nick talked about before, uh, that means separating the wheat from the chaff on spending, spending more on investment, less on consumption. But it also means comprehensive tax reform that will make it simpler, fairer, generate more revenues uh, over time. Um, you know, this is not rocket science. Last thing I'll say is that Nick and I went around the country through 27 states, and we gained agreement of a supermajority of Americans on a whole range of reforms uh, that should be able to get bipartisan support and will solve the problem. Thank you, Jerry, for your question. I want to remind everyone listening that Nick needs our help to defeat politics as usual on Election Day, November 4th. Please, again, press 1 if you'd be willing to volunteer by having a yard sign or covering a polling location on Election Day. Press 2 if you'd be willing to make a donation of any size. And press 3 if you can't do either, but we can count on your vote. Nick will personally be in touch after this meeting for those willing to get involved. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for participating in this evening's telephone town hall meeting and for your great questions. Unfortunately, we couldn't get to every question. If you have any additional questions or comments for us, please stay on the line, and you'll be able to leave a voicemail at the end of the event. If you'd like to keep in touch with the campaign, you can also say and spell your email address in that voicemail, and we will add you to our list. To conclude the meeting, I will turn it over to Nick Troiano for closing remarks. Thank you very much, Matt, for moderating this event, and thank you to Mr. Walker for taking time out of your busy schedule to share your expert insights with us. I'm very proud to have your support uh, in this endeavor and grateful. And thanks to each and every one of you on the line right now who've been so generous with your time and attention this evening and to making it to this point in the telephone town meeting. Uh, we have several more coming up this week on different issues in particular. They're listed on my website nicktriano.com slash townhalls if you'd like to participate in any others. I'm asking for your vote three weeks for, from today on November 4th because I believe America deserves better than politics as usual. I believe I have the energy, the integrity, and the ideas to represent our community and to be part of a larger effort to truly fix our politics and find common ground solutions to the major issues we face, beginning with reducing our debt and growing our economy. It was Thomas Jefferson who remarked that we do not have government by the majority. We have government of the majority who participate. So regardless of who you choose to vote for in this election, it is critical that you please get out to vote on November 4th and bring your friends and family, because that is the only way we can begin to reclaim our government for the people and tackle the large and growing challenges we face. You can always reach me personally by my email, it's Nick, N-I-C-K, at nicktriano.com. And my last name is T-R-O-I-A-N-O. -O. Or you can call me at the office. My number is 570-232-4683. Please follow along my campaign online, too. nicktriano.com is the site. We're also on Facebook. If you look up or search Nick Triano or go to facebook.com slash nicktrianousa. I look forward to keeping in touch with you. I'm anxious to see what we can accomplish together over these next three weeks. Uh, for those who are willing to volunteer by pressing 1 or donate by pressing 2 or pledging your vote by pressing 3, I very much appreciate that and look forward to having a personal conversation with you over the next couple of days. Thanks again for your time, uh, and have a great evening. Uh, America deserves better, and I know that together we can do better.